Welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, second week in a row, co-hosting with me is Dave Eddy. What's going on, man? Hey, man. Happy to be back, dude. I actually kind of get a kick out of this. I, I won't probably ever admit this again, but I actually kind of like you, Joe. <laughs> So um, keep that to yourself, huh? All right, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll take it, man. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, right. don't get me wrong. Your wife has nothing to worry about, so not like that. <laughs> All right. Awkward moments. Yes, sir. Um, That's how we roll, bud. All right. Well, let's get right into it. So we're watching the uh, we're, we're we're recording this a little later than I usually do, um, but we're watching the Rams Browns, and it is currently. Let me get back to the main scoreboard here. Browns 13, Rams 10. We've had a Cooper Cup touchdown and a – I don't actually know who the hell that was. Oh, Demetrius Harris, the tight end. That's why I didn't know the number. Okay, uh, he scored a touchdown. It was a Chubb touchdown, and then it got called back for a penalty that I did not catch the penalty for, but uh, I did see that get called back, which is good news for me because in the fantasy six-pack uh, fr- staff and friends league – uh, I, uh, I'm going against Chubb and it's a super close matchup. A Chubb touchdown would be bad for me. Um, all right, let's move right along, man. Uh, Bills, Bengals, uh, Bills took this one 21, 17. They were up, uh, early and then the Bengals kind of mounted a comeback, but dude, Allen, dude, Josh Allen, man, he's a playmaker. I, I like not a lot of fantasy stats coming out of this game from either side, you know, you know, there's a couple of good guys, but you know, you're not. I don't think either one of these teams are going to see a lot. But you know, Allen, he's just overall like he's just gonna make plays. He's just exciting to watch. Uh, I mean, do you have any thoughts on the Bills side of this? You know, if, from a fantasy impact. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, Allen is you know a really good quarterback. I think he's one of those guys who's actually probably better in real life because. You know, he's not super pretty to watch, but he's effective. I guess it's almost like a like a pitcher sometimes who can be like wildly effective, you know? Right. Because that team doesn't have a lot going for it. Um, I mean, good God, Frank Gore is, you know, pace, <laughs> pacing your, you know, pacing your running attack on purpose. I know they had an injury yeah, to Singletary, but, but still, you know. But um, he was doing it last week even when Singletary was healthy. I so know, that's not I know. good. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, they're 3-0. I think that, you know, when we finally look back at the season and, you know, you go, oh, hey, oh, the Bills finished 5-11. and 11. Well, that makes sense. And somebody will go, oh, don't you remember when they were 3-0? and oh, oh, <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And then you look at the schedule and you go, oh, shit. Oh, the Bills are 3-0. and oh. Yeah, oh, no kidding. Well, that's interesting. So, I mean, you know, it's a long – well, it's not a long season, but, I mean, it's a long season. It is a long and, season. And, you know, 3-0 and right. will turn into, you know, 3-5 and five before you know it. And, yep. you know, it, it is what it is. So. But hey, good for them. I mean, they're three zero. Enjoy it. I mean, hell, you yeah. never know, man. You catch lightning in a bottle, and all of a sudden, you know, you're seven and one, and shit. So, hey, good for them, man. Good for them. Over on the Cincinnati side, uh, the the passing game kind of disappeared in this one. You know, a lot of people were excited about John Ross, and I got sucked in by it, unfortunately, and started him in one league. Uh, bad on me. Um, Mixon still not looking great, man. I think this offensive line is just struggling big time. But you know, he he did find the end zone, thankfully, in 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 the receiving game. But I mean, I don't know anything that you're really looking toward in this on the Cincinnati team so as far as fantasy. Uh, not. I mean, not really. Um, I mean, I was kind of curious to see. You know how Ross would do. Um, I, I mean, I don't think he's going to remotely continue what he's you know, done the first two weeks, but it would have been interesting, I guess, you know, if he would have kept going. Yeah, right. um, nice to see that Mixon was pretty healthy. I um, mean, we got his carries. Uh, other than that, I mean, they're, they're a shitty team, so there's not a whole lot going on. I don't really have a whole no. lot to say about no, the Cincinnati you, Bengals. You, uh, you can end it right there. That's yeah, okay. I did. Yeah, that's about uh, it. Uh, all right, moving on to Dallas and Miami. Of course, lopsided final score, but honestly, this game was not as lopsided at halftime as a lot of people thought it was going to be, which was good news for a lot of uh, Dallas Cowboy player owners in, in fantasy because they had to play a lot longer than I think everybody thought. Um, not huge games. Uh, you know, Amari got in the end zone twice, That's so that's big. And Zeke, 
125 yards, but no touchdown yet. Pollard got the garbage time, 103 yards and touchdowns. So, so that's good there. Uh, I don't think there's anything we need to worry about with Zeke going forward. Right. I mean, like Pollard's not going to be taking 13 carries every game from him. Right. God, no. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I know week one, you know, I mean, he obviously was holding out and, you know, missed, you know, the preseason, all the off season. So week one, they're obviously going to be easy on him. Week two, he played a little bit more. If he had to today, he would have played a lot more. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, why, why even mess around? You know, why even mess around with him? Um, now, if I'm a Cowboys fan, you know, shit at halftime, I'm I'm probably about having a heart attack. Going is is Josh Rosen gonna <laughs> gonna gonna beat me? Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? It was ten um, to six at halftime. It was a yeah. score game. It was so crazy. I wrote yeah, a tweet out. Weird. I think it said something like. This Cowboys uh, Miami game reminds me of like a top twenty five FBF team playing like I, I wrote FBS team, but I meant FCS team, mm-hmm. like some chump MCS team. They're just struggling the first half because they came out thinking it was gonna be a cakewalk, and then it wound up not being. <laughs> uh, but over the Miami side, though, I mean, you kind of hit it right on the head. I mean, Rosen was kind of the only storyline from them. Like, there's just nothing here, right? But even he, like. He's not fantasy worthy, but it's just interesting to watch. And the offense was a little bit better under him, but still not enough to matter, right? I mean, it's just nothing. Oh, no, there's nothing to write home about with that team. Um, I mean, if I'm a Dolphins fan, I guess the you know the best thing that comes out of this game isn't a whole lot other than, you know, Rosen got to play. And, you know, you get to see what he can or cannot do. I think... You know, they're one of the teams that are definitely going to be right there for that number one pick. If they get it, odds are they're going to go a quarterback. Yeah. And oh, yes. and then, you know, Rosen goes to who, whoever else next. Um, you got to feel bad for the kid. but it's just... Yeah, I mean, I you know, there's no way they're making the playoffs. So yeah. there's not a whole lot he probably could do to where, you know, he, he probably keeps that job for a yeah, long period of not. time. Because they're not going to win, like, four or five games and nope. so they're going to draft a quarterback. So, I mean, it sucks, but whatever. I'm done talking about the Dolphins too. Yeah, no, <laughs> I was going to say, I think we spent yeah, that's 15 good. seconds too long on this. All right. Green Bay, Denver, Green Bay wins the game 27, 16. Um, so we saw, you know, 50, 50 split between Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones again, which isn't a surprise. Jones did get in the end zone twice. So that kind of saves his day. My main takeaway out of this and the question for you is, you know, Aaron Rodgers, again, another 200, low 200 yardish game, one touchdown. You know, he's always he's getting one and touchdown, one or two touchdowns every game so far. Is this the new norm for Rodgers? Is he just kind of a an average quarterback, per se? Like, I think the talent is there, but like for fantasy purposes, is he an average quarterback all of a sudden? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, I mean, I don't think so. Um he has definitely not got as many options as he's had in the past. I mean, Devontae Adams is is great. And after that, um, you know, Jimmy Graham was good like five years ago. Um, so I think that's got probably a lot to do with it. Um, also, I mean, the Broncos defense is, is pretty good. So you kind of, you know, put that together. And I would say that it's not uncommon for Rodgers to, you know, have a game like he did today. It's like he was terrible. Yeah. Um, but I don't see him, you know, winning MVPs and Packers going 14 and two next year. They just, I mean, they are lacking talent. They're playing a good defense. That's, you know, what happens usually. Yeah. Uh, on the Denver side of the ball, we've got Lindsay and Freeman with 21 carries and 15 carries respectively. Lindsay got in the end zone twice. So that's good for Lindsay owners. Um, you know, it's still kind of a split workload, you're going to see it a little heavier on Lindsay this side of this game because Freeman was out for a little while. Uh, he got he got banged up and was taken off the field, but not much else to really uh, point out here except that's kind of where the where the eye is for this for this team. Um, you got any other thoughts on the, on the Broncos? I mean, I don't see them doing a whole lot this year. Uh, they really have to rely on that defense to to carry them. Mm-hmm. I, I don't necessarily think it's the end of the world that, you know, these running backs are, are splitting as well as they are. I mean, if they're both being productive and you can literally put two productive running backs on the field at any time that you want, I think that's a, I think that's a really good thing. Um, you know, it's not like having, 
you know, two quarterbacks, you know, where you're splitting the time and, you know, the saying is, Hey, if you got two quarterbacks, you don't have any, I, with running backs, you know, shit, give me, give me two, give me three good running backs and let them split the carries, you know, go with the hot hand, you know, when it makes sense. But for the most part, you know, it kind of, you know, you're, you're handcuffing yourself. So if somebody gets hurt, okay, well, we still have another good running back. So I, it's a good thing, I think. Yeah, I think in some cases it can be Philly needs to figure it out, though. Well, but that's what I'm saying. If they're, far, but... they're, if they're productive, though, like, sure. I mean, both of these guys were productive today. I mean, yeah, yeah Lindsay oh, got two good. touchdowns, but they're both averaging four yards a carry. Absolutely. I mean, they're both, I mean, they're both a good running back. I mean, neither one of them's like a, you know, a Hall of Famer, but I mean, you have two NFL caliber running backs. Take, take advantage of that. Absolutely. All right, moving on to Atlanta and Indy. We got Atlanta losing 24 27 on the road. Uh, it was bad for Atlanta early, man. The first half, they got a, they got a late field goal to make it 20 to three. So they, they mounted a, a pretty big comeback here, but, uh, Brissett kept it, kept it going for them. Um, you know, my take is like, <laughs> if the Falcons are going to keep getting down like this, which seems to keep happening, um, you know, Matt Ryan's going to put up some pretty gaudy stats again, you know, 304 yards, three touchdowns. Um, Julio has now scored three games in a row. It's amazing. Never thought I would see that. Um, and then, you know, Freeman seeing a bunch of carries was kind of nice to see, although Ito Smith did get knocked out by concussion, but at least they didn't like go to Brian Hill or whatever. Right. I mean, I guess that's the, the big takeaway here is Freeman saw the work, right? So right. maybe you have a little more hope for him. Um, you know, I mean, I've never been a huge Freeman fan. So, I mean, if I, if I look at the Falcons, if, if they're, well, I don't think they're going to, but if they Let's were the to Falcons, do something. Like the Millennium Falcon? That was listen, pretty awesome. Don't, don't give me shit, Joe. Right? <laughs> hey, I'm a big Star Wars <laughs> fan. I, I loved it. <laughs> okay. I just, I don't know. I'd say weird shit sometimes, so whatever. Um, but if I'm a Falcons fan or whatever, fuck you, Michael. Now I'm going to just say it all weird, like for the rest of my life, awesome. Joe. You just Go gave me it. a complex for the you rest should. of my life. Uh, they're going to live and die passing the ball. And, you know, DFS wise today, I actually was riding them. Um, I was stacking Jones, Ryan and Ridley. I did pretty good with oh, Ryan really and Jones, bad. but Ridley, Ridley straight up fucked me in the ass with a tire iron this week. So, um, who <laughs> yeah. would have thought that, who would have thought that, that Hooper was going to have such a good game? Cause I didn't even consider him at tight end. I was like, well, obviously I'm going to stack Jones and Ridley and, you know, but anyways, I mean, <laughs> It's always tough with the Falcons because I always feel like they are they're more talented than usually what you get out of them. So I I don't know, man. It's 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 tough with them. I, I do love how you are owning the Falcon, by the way. Um I don't so even know what, I don't even know how to say it anymore, no thanks. All right. Moving on to Indy, uh just an overall solid offensive game from everybody. Brissett was Brissett was good, Mac was good, even though he came in banged up. Uh, Hilton's the big story, unfortunately, uh, good game, but he walked off the field with a quad injury. That touchdown play was his last play. Um, and so we have to wait and see what the diagnosis is and how long he's out, but this offense is going to struggle mightily without him. Right. Oh yeah. I would think so. I mean, who, who are you going to throw the ball to Paris Eric Campbell, Eric fucking Paris Campbell. Come on. Yeah. They talked Listen, and mocked him up in the preseason, man. I took him in all my uh, dynasty leagues. But I mean, are you going to the playoffs with, no, with Paris I'm, Camp? Okay, I'm kidding, there you go. dude. You know, there you that. go. I, I know, you know that. I know, I know that. <laughs> but I'm just like, I mean, they already lost Locke, and then they have Ebron on their team. That must suck, just in general, anyways. And then now Ty Hilton goes yeah, what down. Ebron like, do to you? Oh, I forgot you're a Lions fan. Yeah, do you don't listen to the DFS podcast, do you? I'm kidding. <laughs> That's why I all I do out. is every episode I I have something to say about Eric Ebron. I just I just go out <laughs> of my way to say something about him. You didn't hear the whole story about I, why I wouldn't let him save my kids from a fire. No, we're gonna have Ow. to save that. We're gonna have to save that for this podcast. Fair Please. enough. Fair enough. Um, um, but yeah, but, I mean, shit, dude. The Colts have been surprisingly good uh, without Ty Hilton, even if it's for a couple of weeks. I I think they're screwed. Yeah, I I kind of agree. Uh, moving on to the game of the week, and uh, it didn't disappoint from a total point side, but I think it's like competitive. It was kind of bad until the very, very end. 
Uh, Baltimore kind of shot themselves in the foot, though, uh, going for it twice, going for it for two a couple different times. Uh, but start with Kansas City. Uh, Mahomes, I mean, I never thought I would say it, but I, I actually am starting to believe that he will throw for 50 touchdowns again, which I just is incredible. Um, uh, McCoy looked good. Interestingly enough, a lot of people thought Darwin Thompson was going to be the next man up, and that was clearly not the case. So um, I'm calling him a drop at this point. Like, just bye bye. Like, not even a point owning him now, unless you're in Dynasty. Um, I'm going to pat myself on the back a little bit, though, because there's a bunch of people that asked me about Miko Hardman on the. I did the, the Twitter, uh, what we call the, the fantasy mailbag for Fantasy Six Pack. And. A bunch of people ask me about Hardman, like, oh, should I start Hardman over, like, Curtis Samuel or I forget who else now. And they were all really close calls. Like, it wasn't like a, you know, like a clear, let's start Hardman, right? But it ended up being that I just said, you know what, like, Samuel's fine. He's safe. He'll get you a bunch of points. But Hardman could literally outscore him in one play. And he did. (laughs) <laughs> one catch, right. like I forget how many yards it was for the one catch, but it was just like, oh, 83 yards. Now I'm looking at it. Uh, and he only, so he only caught two out of five targets for 97 yards, but that one 83 yard touchdown put him over the top. So do I think that's going to happen every week? No, but that's what the Kansas City offense can do. But I mean, what do you, I mean, what do we take from this Kansas City offense besides the fact that they're just ridiculously good? Um, man, yeah, they are ridiculously good. I think it's going to be hard for Mahomes to not win the MVP this year. I mean, Baltimore's defense is legit, and I was a little hesitant. I didn't, I didn't have any Mahomes shares in DFS just because it was, it was just too scary. Um, I, I, I tried to fade, you know, the the top tier defenses against, you know, the, the even the best players. So the fact that he went out and had another incredible day, you know, three touchdowns and close to 400 yards is just ridiculous. Um, you know, it doesn't have Tyreek Hill. I would argue he doesn't necessarily have the, you know, the best running game either. I mean, LaShawn McCoy was, you know, awesome five years ago, um, you know, again, but he's still a, you know, capable back, but I mean, you got Travis Kelsey and then that offense is just crazy. And I mean, what is it other than Mahomes? I mean, he, he's it. I mean, if, if he were to go down, they'd be in some serious trouble. I, oh, yes. So, I mean, Mahomes is just incredible, man. Yeah. If he, I mean, if he was going to have a, a bad week, and not say you can't have a bad week against anybody just kind of randomly, but this would have been the week where, you know, you could see him struggling, and that was not the case. Yeah, I, I thought uh, I still thought this game was gonna be high scoring, but you know you did mm-hmm. look for somebody to struggle, and unfortunately it right. was the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, uh, Mark Ingram got his 103 and three touchdowns, a bunch of bunch of short yardage <laughs> touchdowns. But you know Jackson didn't look great, uh, missed some throws. Uh, his you know he was like almost 50 percent, just over 50 percent completion rate, which right. was not what we wanted. You know, could it have been the Mark Andrews injury? Um, it just, I, I don't really know what it was with him, but you know, there was a lot of narrative before this game that, you know, the, the Ravens had played, of course they played Miami, right? Bad defense, played the Cardinals, bad defense. But then you thought, okay, they're playing Kansas city. They're maybe not as bad as those teams where they're so bad. So he's still going to get his, but you know, coming out for those first two games, it was, well, let's wait till he plays a real defense. I mean, is this a real enough defense that he should have struggled this much or could we legit be kind of worried here um i mean i honestly consider the chiefs at least at this point still to to be a bottom 10 defense in the league uh i mean everyone's a little bit better at home so i definitely think that 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 helps i think the ravens are not as bad as we saw this week and they're definitely not as good as we saw you know the first two weeks i i think they're somewhere in the middle Uh, I mean, this week was a little bit disappointing because uh, I really thought that they actually had a chance to improve on what they did the first two weeks. I mean, I, I would have actually been more surprised, um, you know, with what happened today than if they would have went out there and, you know, put up, you know, 45 points whether they won or lost. But, I, you know, like I said, I think the the truth is somewhere in between weeks one and two and, and week three. Uh, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you there. So moving on here, we got the Minnesota Vikings versus the Oakland Raiders. Um, that was my 
bad Chris Berman impression. Um, 34-14, Minnesota, pretty lopsided game overall. Um, Dalvin Cook does it once again. Thielen had a good game, but honestly, like the passing attack in general just is struggling. I don't know if you know if you want to call it struggling. They just don't have to do anything, right? So, I mean, is this something we should be worried about the rest of the year? I mean, Cousins has passed the ball 10 times, 21 (laughs) times, and then, of course, in their loss last week, he passed 32 times, but... I mean, is this something we're going to have to worry about where they're just going to get up and they're just going to abandon the pass? And so Thielen and Diggs are going to struggle? No. Um, I mean, if anything, I would say I, I would be worried about it if I was, um, you know, the, the, the opponents because I'm not a big Kirk Cousins fan. Uh, first of all, he went to Michigan State, so he's probably gay. Um, but <laughs> Wow. All right. But Oh, wait, was that – did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, my apologies. Um, Are you a Michigan Wolverines fan, by chance? Uh, I know, and then uh, <laughs> then you start talking about Wisconsin, and anyways. Um, okay. So, like, I mean, so first of all, Dalvin Cook is a is a beast, dude. Like, he's he's just been crazy good. So, I mean, why wouldn't you just pound it with him? But what what I say, you know, what would make them scared? What scares me about them? Um, you know, even just a, in a Lions fan or you know team in the NFC is, I mean, Thielen is an elite receiver. Um, Diggs is not too far behind. So if and when they have to start throwing the ball, I'm not saying I have, you know, the most confidence in the world in Cousins, but you can't tell me that he couldn't go out there and, you know, put up 400 yards um, throwing the ball to those guys if he had to. And that, yeah. defense is, that defense is legitimate. So, I mean, I don't blame them for running. What they did. I mean, Cousins hasn't been very good in Minnesota, so that's not what they're relying on. And if – if Cook just keeps doing what he's doing, I mean that offense is is, is pretty good. And either way, when you're two and one, I don't really care what you're doing. Uh, you're you're playing you know good football, so keep at it. Yeah, I, I guess just from a fantasy standpoint, you worry that they're going to have a bunch of games like this where they don't pass the mm-hmm. ball enough. So if you're starting Diggs and Thielen, you're just hoping they get theirs early. And if not, you're kind of like, oh crap, okay. Uh, but moving over to the o- Oakland side, and I mean. Josh Jacobs came into this game. He was sick. He was kind of injured coming into the week. Didn't do a whole lot. Car is car. But, dude, Darren Waller? Holy yeah, God. Darren. Yeah. Wow. 13 catches for 134 yards. Who is he? Jameson Crowder from week one? What the hell is this business? You got to follow my DFS, man. I've been on <laughs> Darren Waller since week one. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, can this continue? I mean, clearly not 13 catches. But, like, is he just going to yeah. be balling out all year like this? Uh, no, I mean, no, probably not. Um, I mean, he's definitely, you know, one of the biggest breakouts this year. Uh, I mean, 13, 13 catches, you know, DeAndre Hopkins couldn't keep that pace up. Right. But, but I mean, like but even week one he, and week two, man, six and seven, I yeah. mean, that's solid. I and mean, like, that's, even if he does that, like mm-hmm. that's going to be top notch tight end. Yeah, I would be fantasy. surprised if he didn't finish at least top five. And, you know, I mean, leagues can be different, but I'd be surprised if he's not a top five tied in by the end of the year. I mean, if, you know, if we're being honest, I mean, who, we don't really have a lot of guys to throw the ball to um, no. in Oakland. I mean, Tyrell Williams is cool and all, but, I mean, you know, really? Waller's, Waller's <laughs> the way to go. Yeah, Tyrell Williams and I, yeah, we hang out all the time, dude. <laughs> He's coming over tomorrow night. We're going to have burritos. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, watch Monday uh, Night Football, eat burritos. <laughs> All right, moving on to New England and the Jets. Um, Oof, boy, oh boy. Yeah, this game was ugly and ugly fast, and I don't think anybody expected anything less. Um, I will say this. The Jets' defense shockingly had a good game, even though they yeah. lost 30 points because they had yeah. two touchdowns. Um, the Patriots got cute. Not cute. They put in the backups, and – they fumbled and threw an interception. And then they said, screw that. And they put them all back, all the starters back in. So if you were somehow starting the Jets defense, which I'm pretty sure they were 0% owned everywhere, as they should have been, um, you got a great game out of them, even though they mm-hmm. sucked overall. But you know, I, I think the interesting part here to look at, like, I mean, obviously we know Brady got his, Edelman got his, Gordon got his. So James White was out because his wife was having a baby today. 
congrats there. I tell you what, great timing on their part too, huh? Have, have last like, second, right? <laughs> well, no, but I mean, if you're going to do it, do it against the Jets when they're starting their third string quarterback. So good job, Miss <laughs> White. Yeah, right. Um, the interesting part here, though, is that, you know, Michelle got nine carries and a touchdown. That mm-hmm. sounds great. But 11 yards, like, ooh, what happened? Um, Burkhead was way better. 11 carries for yeah. 47 in the touch. Uh, and then, you know, Burkhead threw in six receptions. So those in PPR leagues, they're just loving that. Um, I, I mean, are we worried at all about Sonny Michelle? Like, he hasn't been awesome this year. He's been okay, I guess. I mean, it's hard to worry about anyone on the Patriots offense because, I mean, they just do whatever the fuck they want, you know? I Pretty mean, much. They can just do it. I mean, they can do what they want. They could, if they wanted to, they could have gave Michelle forty carries, and he probably would have had one hundred and fifty yards. But that's just not what they did. I honestly think before the game, they just flip a coin and they just say, "Okay, Burkhead heads, Michelle, you know, Michelle tails, and that's who's going to, you know." No, they don't even know what they're going to do. Pull, you know, pull names out of a hat. I yeah, think the, yeah. The big, obviously, I the, mean, the biggest news coming out of this is obviously AB is out you know, huh. forever, probably. Finally. Yeah. Uh, but then. You know, so now it's down to Edelman and Gordon, basically. Mm-hmm. And Edelman left with a chest injury. They're saying x-rays came up negative, so that's good. But now you know they just have to wait and see how he's going to feel and things like that. So keep an eye out there. You know, Edelman, of course, has always been injury prone. So that's going to mm-hmm. happen. On the Jets side, man, it's bad. It's real bad. Uh, they've got to get Darnold back. Um, otherwise, like this team is going to be atrocious, even Le'Veon Bell. So I think we can move on from that to agree. Sounds good. Yeah. Moving on to the Eagles and your Lions, uh, who sneaked out a win, dude. Congrats to the Lions. Oh, yeah. It was um, an interesting game. I don't think anybody <laughs> picked them to win this game, I'll be honest. Uh, uh, I did. Duh. Uh, okay. Uh, Duh. But anyway. <laughs> 15 15 on one, one, baby. First time to beat the season with a tie. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I think – you know, Wentz did okay considering he had Nelson Aguilar to throw to um, you know, because they were just blanketing Zach Ertz, which was yeah, the pretty much right double decision covered at this point. Yep. Um, you know, I know your original note on here said that, you know, Sanders looked like the clear runner, but I looked back at the stats and maybe it's this, you know, maybe you looked at like snap counts and I didn't, but no, I'm sir. Seeing, I, wa- I watched the game. <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing 13 carries for Sanders mm-hmm. and 11 for Howard and Howard got the touchdown. So like, mm-hmm. I think Sanders is still the better running back, but it's still pretty even split to me. So I don't really know what to take from this. I don't trust no. either one of them at this point. Still, no, no, um, I wouldn't trust either one of them. Uh, on the field, though, Sanders Sanders was the better player. Oh, um, of course, I, mean, I think everybody thinks that same way yeah. they do in in Chicago with Montgomery. Right? It's just not happening mm-hmm. yet for whatever dumb reason. No, so he caught li- a nice passes. Yeah. Too. So on the Lions side here, um, you know, Stafford was mediocre. Um, carry on got a lot of got a lot of carries but mm-hmm. didn't really do anything with it luckily he kind of fell into the end zone <laughs> um you know, 1.8 yards per carry that's not gonna get it done bro uh mm-hmm. galladay disappeared unfortunately but marvin jones had himself a day uh 101 in a touch so you know the Coming into this, I was kind of highlighting the the Detroit receivers because I think they could have exploited. I thought they could have exploited the um, um, the Eagles secondary, but it unfortunately was just Jones and not Galladay. But I mean, yeah. I think the the big thing here is carry on owners. You know, we're expecting much more out of him, and they haven't gotten it yet. You know, could as a Lions fan, like, is he gonna be able to do better going forward? Because it's it's troubling right now, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I guess you really can't do much worse. I mean, obviously, we could sit there and give extreme examples, but it's it's a lot that, you know, that, that line that they have is, is a much better pass-blocking line. And the, the reason that he got so many carries really is, um, I mean, that's part of what, you know, the Bevel offense is coming from Seattle's, you know, to run the ball. But where they where I've seen a huge difference with the Lions this year, and it's it's really made a difference for Stafford, is, I mean, in the past, they've always said, hey, I'm gonna, we're going to stick with the run, we're going to stick with the run, and then they don't because they never can run the ball. They still have been sticking with it, which is how he gets so many carries, but it's been opening up that play action so much. 
Um, I mean, Stanford's hardly beginning hit at all this year. And honestly, a lot of it is simply from them handing the ball to carry on Johnson. He gets two or three yards and then they run play action, you know, at some point later on in the game off that same play. And, and Stafford has five seconds back there to, to throw it to Jones. So fantasy wise. Yeah. I think Johnson might be in some trouble and I wouldn't really want to own him, but real life wise, those 20 carries really open up that passing game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did. I actually bench him in a, in a league today for uh, Christian Kirk in flex. Uh, thanks for yeah. the 10-team league, and I had that option. Moving on to Carolina and Arizona. Carolina gets their first win without Cam Newton, by the way. Um, you know, look, McCaffrey got his. Olsen was good again. Um, big news here, Kyle Allen. I mean, four touchdowns? Yo, this kid looked legit, dude. I mean, I get it was Carolina or the Cardinals, but that's that's legit. Four touchdowns. I don't care who you are. I mean, is there like, is could there be a controversy here if Cam comes back and plays like crap like he has been? Could they just bench him? Oh man. Um. I mean, yeah. Eventually, I guess. Uh. I mean, yeah. Cam's kind of the guy there. I would think. Uh, I don't know what the internals are there, but I really, you know, heard that you know he could be on his way out or anything, but. If, you know, Allen is playing like that and Cam is hurt or at least somewhat hurt, you know, what's the what's the, the rush to bring him back? Uh, right. I, I mean, I honestly wouldn't even be shocked if at some point during the year he just pulls a luck and says, you know what? Hey, I'm still fairly healthy. I've had a good career. I'm just done with football. I, I've actually heard a few people say that as well. So. I mean, it's not even impossible to think that that Cam is close to being done. So, it, I mean, I don't know that I'm going to expect Kyle Allen to, to repeat this performance over and over again. I mean, the four touchdowns is, is one thing. Um, 1926, 261 yards isn't setting the world on fire. But, you know, if you'd had one touchdown, you'd look at the game a lot differently. Oh, of course. But, I mean, th- I think the <laughs> thing is, like, he just moved the ball and, like, yeah. you know, it, it just looked smooth. Like, it just looked good uh, on the on the Arizona side. Kyle Murray, again, throwing the ball just a ton, man. 43 times. He did run the ball a lot more. We pointed that out last week where he wasn't really running. He ran the ball eight times this this game, 69 yards. So that kind of saved him because his rush, his his uh, his passing total wasn't very high, 173. Did get in twice there, but also threw two picks. Sacked eight times. That's brutal, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I don't really know what the biggest story is here. I'm just going to read the line off here for David Johnson. Again, it's kind of – Meh, he got him in the end zone, but 11 for 37, and then he caught 6 for 28. I mean, the biggest story, is it Kyle Murray or, like, David Johnson just being saved by touchdowns at this point, and that's really all he's going? Man, that's tough to say because week one I watched him play against the Lions, and I was a little bit concerned about David Johnson. Um, I felt pretty good about our rush defense, but it was more him out of the backfield. And, you know, during the game – I didn't, you know, we didn't really impact it too greatly. But when you look back, his stats weren't terrible. So I don't know if he's just a, I wouldn't say necessarily a bad fit, but maybe not the right fit for that offense or or, or what it is. But, I mean, he's definitely a talented guy. He's just not producing right now. And I, right. I, I honestly, I, I can't strongly say one way or the other why. Yeah, it's definitely a weird one. I, I can't put my finger on it either. <laughs> Moving on to the Giants of Tampa Bay. And, dude, this could have been, like, the actual game of the day. This game was exciting. Yeah. And it was just fun to watch. I have red zone. And so, like, he just had it on a lot at the very end. Uh, Daniel Jones <laughs> was so fun to watch, man. It just couldn't believe what he was doing. Um, pulled it out. You know, they call him Danny Dimes. I really do hate that name. But I, I feel <laughs> like I have to say it just to say it. Um 336 and two touchdowns, no interceptions. That's a big one there. Uh, ran the ball four times for 28 yards and two touchdowns, including the game, the ultimately the game winner, which probably shouldn't have been, but it was. Sure. Um, uh, you know, Ingram had a good day. Shepard had a good day. We'll get to the Barkley injury, I'm sure, in a second. But quick thoughts on Danny on uh, on Daniel Jones. What 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 are we thinking here with him going forward? I mean, surprising, you know. I, I guess I don't know exactly what I expected. Sign Tampa Bay's got a you know a great defense, but I mean, w- great debut. I mean, way better than you would expect. I, right. I think definitely at the minimum buys himself 
another start or two. I mean, I don't know that, you know, Manning would have necessarily came back unless they needed him to at this point. But I mean, if I'm a Giants fan, I would, you know, I would be happy about, you know, seeing the guy that you got mercilessly mocked for drafting way too high. Right. And to come out and say, hey, fuck you guys, you know? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah so obviously the, the biggest news out of this game is Saquon Hurt uh, left the field, came back in crutches. I'm hearing it's a high ankle sprain, which is not good news. I mean, you're talking, if I can remember, dude, that's like, you're looking at four to six weeks. I think for something like that, especially. Yeah, that's bad, dude. That's really bad. So all, you know, best wishes out to Saquon, dude. I I like watching him play. He's, he's exciting to watch. So, uh, on Tampa Bay side, this was the Mike Evans show. There's all there is to it. Uh, the dude was just filthy. Good. 190 yards and three touchdowns. Um, I, I actually got a question today on Twitter. Uh, asking me about the guy needed one running back and then he needed a flex out of the leftover running backs. And then he gave me some like average receiver and then he included Mike Evans in there. And I was like, <laughs> what? Why? No, like Mike Evans all the way. Well, who are you starting over this guy? Like it's a three team league. This doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, so I'm hoping he listened to me and played Mike Evans, but you know, whatever. Uh, Maybe he just got confused and thought it was like Michael Epps or something. I, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Mike Evans was a clear story here. It was an amazing game by him. Um, I'm just going to move along here. We got Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans uh, going up against the Chargers, and <clears throat> they won 27-20. to 20. Dude, it – it didn't always look pretty for Deshaun, but like he got it done again, man. His stat, the final stat line always seems to be good for him. 351 and three. The running game is just non existent. Nobody really from the passing game like could have stood out. I mean, Atkins got two touchdowns, but I mean, whatever there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, I mean, this is just once again, right? Like just Watson just getting it done. He just under siege the entire game, but only sacked twice. So that's good, I guess. Um, any any quick thoughts on the on the Texans here besides it's Watson and Hawk, uh, Hopkins really? Yeah, I mean Watson's just great. I mean he's one of those guys where I mean you see the stats and even you know where he compares historically you know as he's had a really good start to his career and he's actually better you know on the field in real life than even those stats would indicate. I mean that kid is straight up a baller, dude. Like I mean I would take him on my football team any day of the week. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, on the Chargers side, it, Phillip Rivers might have the ugliest throw ever in the history of football, but it works. And it works, especially for Keenan Allen, who caught 13 passes for 183 yards and two touchdowns. I do just could not get stopped. Uh, it was incredible. Um, I, you know, Eckler didn't have a great game, but they were coming from behind a lot toward the end there. So he got kind of, you know, put out of the game but he still caught seven catches so like ppr leagues you're fine with eckler still this week even though even in a losing effort and not you know he didn't put up anywhere near the stats he did in week one and two but um i don't know thoughts on thoughts on the chargers at all just besides like they just kind of performed <laughs> as always yeah i mean chargers could be three and all right now i mean it's yeah. i mean they're one i mean i know you could say that about a lot of teams and go you know they could have won this they should have won that but i mean i think they're a pretty good team uh, I mean, Eckler, yeah, he, you know, didn't have the same game he's had all year, but I don't, I don't think that's a team that, that misses Melvin Gordon and Keenan Allen. I, I think I talked about this last week. I, I said, Keenan Allen's one of the best receivers in the game. I watched him last week. I get the best of Darius Slay. Um, I thought that he would have a good game this week. I guess I usually will, but I, I wouldn't have thought he was going to have the game. He did. I mean, he, he's, he's a hell of a receiver, man. Yeah. Um, San Fran Pitt, San Fran beat Pittsburgh 24 to 20. Mason Rudolph's opening game, not great. I mean, 174 and two. Connor was bad. Juju caught a long pass, which saved his day. But overall, nothing really to be excited about with the Steelers. You got, I mean, you, you getting excited about anything here with them with Mason Rudolph under center? I mean, not really. Um, it's gonna yeah. kind of be a wasted season, I, I suspect. Um, I mean, you know, Brown's gone and Bell's gone and Roethlisberger's gone. And I mean, Maybe Juju, get one of those quarterbacks. 
Maybe. I mean, I guess it depends. I mean, I, I, I mean, from the outside, at least, it, it seems as though they do like Mason Rudolph. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll I think if they have a chance at one of those guys this year coming out, they got to go get one, right? Yeah, I don't know if they'll be – I mean, I know they're 0-3, but I don't know if – I don't necessarily know if they'll be, like, top three pick bad. I mean, they're still fairly talented. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, they're they, not gonna Actually, you know what, though? They, they traded their first round pick. I forgot. Oh, well, perfect. Hey, oh, yeah, of course they did. Yeah, of course they did for, for Fitzpatrick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. So That's right, because I remember when that trade happened, I, I said, oh, shit, they might have just traded like a top five pick. They but, uh, probably did. So on the San Fran yeah. side here, uh, Garoppolo wasn't great today. Uh, did throw an interception or throw, throw a touchdown, but he did throw two picks. Um, a lot of split work in the in the backfield again, which I think is what the focus should be on for them fantasy. 12 carries for Mostert. Uh, 14 for Brita, only eight for Wilson. But at one point in the game, he had three carries for five yards and two touchdowns. So most certain Brita owners are pissed off, and I am one of them. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Can you start Wilson, though? I mean, like, you can't bank on this, right? It's tough. Um, I mean, I like had John never. John Coon territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I'd never heard of, uh, you know, Mustard before the season, so he's new to me to begin with. Um, I've always kind of liked Brita. But... I think Mustard up at the end of last year because Brita yeah, really? was banged up. And, of course, um, uh, McKinnon was out for the whole year, so Brita mm-hmm. or Mustard had a couple of decent games, but I picked him up last year in a dynasty league just for the hell of it, but I uh, caught him before the season started because everybody was healthy again. Um, so much for that. <laughs> It's just one of those weird guys who, I mean, before last week, I, I didn't really, I don't, I never heard of the guy. It's just, I don't know why, but uh, just one of those guys. But I mean, that Niners, that Niners team isn't bad. Um, I don't think that they're three and oh good. Um, you know, again, you got to look at team schedules, you know, especially this early on. But I mean, Jimmy G is a good quarterback. If they've got two good running backs and, you know, Greg Kittle or uh, Greg Kittle, um, George, George Kittle. Kittle. I always say Greg Kittle. I don't know why. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> I always say, I always call him Greg Kittle. Um, but I mean, yeah, that team has a chance to 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 do something. I I don't see him win a Super Bowl, but um, I could definitely see them getting in the playoffs and not being an easy out. Yeah. Uh, the last game of the week here for the Sunday afternoon games is New Orleans 33, Seattle 27. Teddy Bridgewater steps in and gets them a win, man. Um, I think my takeaway here is, you know, it wasn't it wasn't gaudy numbers for any of these guys like Kamara and Thomas, although Kamara did score twice. So that helps. But I think it's safe to say now that uh, Bridgewater is not going to drastically hurt the value of Kamara and Thomas going forward. Yeah, I mean, this this actually was probably the most surprising game to me of the weekend. Um, I, I really was big on Chris Carson and DFS this week because I thought that they were going to, you know, have this game. You know, I didn't think they were going to blow them out, but I thought they'd have this game pretty well in hand. Um, with with Penny being out, I thought he might get like 25 carries this game. So yeah. I was just going to kind of, you know, ride the the workload and, and see what happened. So when the Saints all of a sudden are playing, you know, pretty good football uh, with Bridgewater and, and and thank God Kamara came back to life. Um, I mean, I was very surprised. I mean, if you're a Kamara owner, you know, this you had to be really nervous after last week where he's going out and he just, you know, doesn't do anything. And kind of right back to the same Kamara this week against, you know, not a terrible defense. So, um, yeah, very surprising game this week I, between those two. Yeah, interesting. Um, I, I kind of expected the same thing with Seattle getting up big and just kind of mm-hmm. running and running running. But instead, Russell Wilson threw the ball 50 times, man. Right, go uh, figure. I have a note here now that after three games, Wilson has had to pass the ball 105 times. That's already a quarter of the amount of he did last year in a full 16 game. So he is well above his pace last year in passing attempts. And, I mean, is that just a testament to this defense that they're just not – that great of a defense anymore or i mean i don't know what it is like he's just having to just pass a ton yeah and that's a team that likes to run the ball um i haven't watched a you know more than you know a few minutes of seattle so i i can't you know speak from my eyes but i mean shit <laughs> russell wilson's you know one of the top five quarterbacks in the league you know in real life um and so I don't think that you're necessarily, you know, worried about him having to throw the ball if he has to. 
but it is surprising to see, you know, especially in this game, 50 passes. Uh, if Breeze was on the field and, you know, this game ended up becoming high scoring, okay, cool. But when Breeze is out of the game, like I said, I, I would have definitely bet the way under on him getting 40 attempts, let alone 50. That, right. That's 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 just crazy. 100%. But I mean, he was good. So, you know, he was good. They lost, but I mean, he was good. Yeah. So, all right, that's it for the games. You got any uh, fantasy football venting stories or anything? I think I'm about to have one. I'm going to freaking lose my mind here in my. In no, I don't have much. League. The only thing that I'll say is, I mean, I was. Disappointed again. I've I've started TJ Hawkinson in some fashion in in all three weeks. In week one, I looked like a genius. Um, last week, he wasn't really part of the offense. Same thing this week. I mean, he had one catch for seven yards. He did have a touchdown catch technically that that got called back. I did um, see that. Stanford was moving around a little bit, and he had just stepped out of bounds and you know caught the ball. So, and we didn't get screwed or anything crazy like that. That's just what happened. And then later on in the game. Um, he had another ball that very well could have been a touchdown, but it was really well defended. So a little bit disappointed in Hawkinson um, from a fantasy standpoint. Um, but real life wise, um, you know, he's, he's still somebody out in the field you got to account for. He's been good in the running game blocking wise. You wouldn't know it by carry on Johnson's numbers, but um, yeah, he's been pretty good. So kind of bummed that Hawkinson hasn't made me look smarter more often. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine, as I kind of alluded to earlier, is I I need now I need Chubb not to get more than one point eight more points before the end of this game, uh, which there is about three minutes and change. And thankfully, thankfully LA is up and they've got the ball, so Gurley needs to just kill this clock, man, because. Uh, if I lose, I will have scored the third most points in the league um, mm-hmm. this week. So I will be very angry to lose in that type of fashion. That always sucks. So go Rams. <laughs> Big time, dude. Um, anyway. Oh, why are they passing? God sakes. Oh, no. Oh, well, if the Browns just run it back. Oh, damn it. All right. Never mind. Um, interception by the Browns. And I thought they were going to run it in for six, but he fell down. So. <laughs> Oh, God, that could be bad. I think Chubb's going to get it. I'm going to be pissed. All right. That's it, man. Um, thanks for coming on again, and we'll uh, I'm sure you'll be back on soon. I so, hope so. Hope everybody had a good week, and talk to you later.